Welcome back to the YouTube channel. It's your favorite village boy, Mr. Ghana, baby. And I've always been telling you guys that agriculture is the future. And I'm not going to stop talking about this until I see the youth of Africa investing in agriculture. I am a farmer. I'm not a fisherman. But I keep on telling you guys that the things that we overlook, those are the things that can earn us more money. I mean, most of you are telling me that we don't have enough money to invest into real estate. We don't have enough money to invest in industries in Africa. But I want to tell you that you have enough money to invest in a farm. And this is why I brought this episode, which is titled, Teaching You How to What? Farm in Africa with little amount of money. I'm not saying it's all about going to the farm to weed. Yeah, it's all about investing little amount of money to do petty things surrounding you that will earn you more money and that is why i'm bringing you a new episode this episode is not about only interviewing young africans i can interview anyone i mean anyone who has something to teach you so that the thousand ghana city that you have the thousand dollars that you have in your pocket you can use it to invest in something meaningful surrounding you my name is still mr ghana baby come with me it's 10 minutes episode and i'm gonna see you as soon as i'm done don't forget to like the video subscribe and be part of this awesome family two million this year i'll see you all you know what i saw you on the internet and i had to come and look for you but on the internet, when I read your profile, they told me you're Kenyan. Yes, yes, I'm a Kenyan. You're Kenyan? Yes, I'm born third generation Kenyan. Third generation? Of Indian origin. Um, you speak Swahili? Yes, I speak Swahili. Habari? Zuri sana. Um, unafana nini? I don't know what even I'm saying, man. Jeez, man, my, my Swahili is so bad. Niko Nawode Maya, the legend himself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a pleasure meeting you. Same and um, I have, the reason why I came to see you today is like, I realize that you're doing something new, something different. I'm trying to um, inspire so many young Africans to invest in Africa with a little amount of money. And that's what led me to your house. So this is where you live. Yes, this is where I live. This is my backyard. And you can see I have fresh fish coming right from my backyard. You're doing everything at your backyard. This is my backyard. And this is the concept we want to develop because, because of urbanization. A lot of people are moving to cities and they don't have huge tracts of land to put up ponds. So we are trying to encourage urban aquaculture in your backyards. You know what? I, I know when it comes to fish farming, the ones that I've visited, I mean, it's huge. It, it can take the whole area. Yes. But you're just doing it right at your backyard. Yes, yes, yes. And this, this is bioflock technology. Now, what you see them doing in huge ponds, I'll explain to you, in a huge pond, okay, if it is unmanaged, mm -hmm from an acre of a land and a pond on an acre of land when you have not managed your pond mm. you can get around six to eight tons of fish from that one acre with my technology if you put it on one acre you will get more than 70 tons of fish that is the difference y you said my technology I mean, this technology is not my technology this this technology was actually developed in the US and in Israel way back in the 1990s okay and it is uh, used a lot uh, in in other countries especially in asia okay. where whereby they need to bring down the cost of production because everything is very highly competitive so they need to bring down the cost of production so they use a lot of this technology okay to produce more at a lower cost you know what um we are in ghana yeah before you, you take us to go and see what you're doing you are, you are in ghana right now but you said you're born in kenya third generation what brought you to Ghana then? Uh, I came to Ghana. Uh, initially, I, I used to work for a bank. And then I, I stopped that and I started my own uh, manufacturing of tarpaulin. Okay. So we manufacture the tarpaulin. One of the products we manufacture is the tarpaulin tanks for the fish. Y you manufacture right here yes, in Ghana? Yes, we manufacture in Ghana. We, we produce them in Ghana. Oh. Yes. And so then after the tarpaulin, you decided to... So when I had the tarpaulin mm -hmm. and I saw that there is a need to bring in this technology and because I was trained also in this technology in India, okay. in Bioflock, I decided to now try and introduce this technology using our tanks. You can also do cement tanks, but those are a bit more expensive. This is cheaper. 
and we want to try and bring down the cost of production as much as possible. I am here because so many Africans that watch me, especially the young ones, are saying that it's so expensive to invest in Africa. H how much do you think it will cost us to, I mean, invest in this type of technology? Okay, for this type of technology, for example, this is a three meter diameter tank because I don't have a lot of space, but the basic commercial size is a four meter diameter tank which can take 10,000 liters of water. Whoa. Yeah, so that 10,000 liters of water can give you around uh, 300 to 500 kilos of fish. Now, depending on how you are harvesting, if you are harvesting at, uh, say, 300 grams, mm. you are talking of 1,600 tilapia from a four meter diameter tank Is from your backyard. C can we just go and check it out? I don't know if you're willing to train people for me because that's the reason why I'm here. Um, how do we reach out to, in terms of if somebody wants consultation or want to know how to okay. um, do this in their backyard? Yeah, we, we have a website, okay. uh, www.bioflockafrica.com. Okay. So you can reach us through the website, our contacts and everything is there. Okay. All the details are there. So we have four four uh, services and products. One is the training. Mm. So we'll be training people on this technology. And uh, in sub-Saharan Africa, we would be the first trainers of this technology. There are farms, there's one in Malawi and one being set up in South Africa, but those are big scale. Mm. They are not for small scale farmers. Yeah. So we would be the first Africans to train Africans in Africa. I love that. The fact that he's stressing on Africa for Africans, that's awesome. Yeah. You know what, I just want to ask you a question. You've lived in Africa all your life, born and raised in here. What is that one thing that if you had a chance to change up in Africa, you would change it? What was that one thing? It is these technologies that we need in Africa. And the people who have these technologies are not very happy to give them to us. They want us to go for technologies like RAS, which is the recirculating aquaculture system, which is very expensive. It's a white elephant, so it's an expensive system to implement mm -hmm. and also a very expensive system to run. Now, when I'm talking of RAS, I'm talking about the proper RAS where you have your biofilters, you have mechanical filters, you have UV, all those uh, sophisticated technologies. Mm. I'm not talking about the technology where we take buckets and we put pebbles and we put some ceramic stones and we say that is RAS. I'm not talking of that RAS. I'm talking of the proper RAS. That is a very expensive system. Mm. And that is what people want us to use because that is a white and it is not going to work unless you are doing very high value fish because the cost of running that technology will not pay you when you harvest your fish. So these are the kind of technologies that we need to bring to Africa for Africans to benefit from. And that is my objective. So this, it, it's, 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 it's profitable and sustainable. What is your name once again? My name is Sailesh. And like I said, I'm, I'm a Kenyan based here in Ghana for the last few years. Just to give you a bit of perspective about uh, the, the technologies. Okay? Mm -hmm. So on one side of the spectrum, we have the pond technology, mm -hmm. okay, where you dig a pond and you leave your fish. In that, you will get around five to six tons per acre. Mm -hmm. On the extreme side, we have the RAS system, mm -hmm. recirculating aquaculture system. Yeah. There you can get 50 plus kilos per cubic meter of water. Yeah. But the cost of implementing that technology is huge and is not really for anybody on a small scale to do. This technology can give you around 30 to 50 kilos, depending on your level of expertise and your training, okay, at a fraction of the cost of doing an RAS system. And people can put this in their backyard. This you can even put inside your room because there's absolutely no smell, as you can see. Yeah. One of the other benefits of this system, again, is, you see, because uh, the protein is being generated in the system, the microbial protein, we recommend even that you use low protein feed. Now, low protein feed, what does that do? It reduces the cost of feed. So when people start taking this technology up and the feed producers start producing the low protein cost feed, feed yeah. the cost of feed will come down. So in addition to you saving on the amount of feed, mm. you're also saving on the type of feed mm. because the protein content has reduced. Mm. What that also does for the environment is because we get a lot of the protein from the oceans, we are taking a lot of the fish from the oceans to convert into fish feed mm. as fish meal. So we will now reduce that pressure on the environment and use that fish for humans. Mm. And then in this technology, we reduce our, our, our consumption of yeah. uh, fish protein. 
the last benefit that I want to talk about is the uh, health benefit. You see, this is organic fish. Yeah. When you eat organic things, you become healthy. So now if you look at the macro level, when people stop falling sick, yeah. the pressure on our health systems will reduce. also reduce. So it has a macro benefit also, in addition to the micro for the small people. Mm. If you look at the economic benefits, those are huge. Imagine if everybody has, or maybe a thousand people in Ghana have this tank in their backyard yeah. and you're producing a ton of fish every, yeah. every six months or five months. Ghana imports $250 million worth of fish. Now we can shift that balance in our favor. Okay. Instead of importing, we can now even become exporters of organic fish. Mm. You understand? So that is one benefit. Another benefit is if you put this in the schools, the children can benefit from good quality protein on one hand. On the other hand, you see, this is a very scientific technology. Yeah. So what they learn in science, they will apply right. it straight into this on a practical level. And those children will, can then become aquapreneurs when they leave school. They don't need to really pursue uh, other courses. They can go into aquaculture. So we can grow that. Another area we can look at is even the prisons, for example. Mm. We can train the inmates in this technology. So by the time they come back to join society, they yeah. are already skilled and they have ready jobs waiting for them. You see, if I, if I take you to Kenya, for example, this, this is what I call an appropriate technology for Africa. If you look at Kenya, for example, we started appropriate technology in agriculture as the greenhouse yeah. in the 1960s. So today, Kenya exports a lot of horticultural product, products as well as flowers. It's one of the leading flower exporters in the world because we started then. Mm. And if you look at the agronomists across the world and yeah. particularly in Africa, they come from Kenya. Kenya. Why? Sure. Because they built the expertise over the years. Now, Ghana, with me here and with this technology, we have that unique advantage that we can train our people so that by the time the other countries try and catch up with us, uh, we have a pool of experts who we can then export to the other countries. So that is an advantage we have. And, and this technology is the technology of the future. It's the blue revolution in aquaculture. And this is what people should adopt if they want to get profitable output. And this, this can be used for any fish. If it can work for tilapia, hmm. you can use this for catfish with your eyes closed. <laughs> No, since you've been mentioning so many advantages, what are the disadvantages of using this method? Okay, there are no, I wouldn't call them disadvantages because there are no disadvantages. There are only challenges. There are small challenges, like every system has a challenge. The first and the most important challenge of this technology is the training. Training is extremely important. You have to be properly trained to be able, because all this is based on scientific principles. And you have to understand the scientific principles before you can manage the water. So training is the most important thing. Second uh, challenge is that uh, it needs some preparation time. So you don't just fill your water and bring fish and you put them inside. It will not work. Mm. So there is a preparation time. You have to prepare the water, you have to prepare the fish, and then you can start. And once you do that, your mortality is almost zero. You should not get any mortality. So that is one of the, 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 the challenges. So Another challenge is electricity. You must have constant electricity, if especially you are doing tilapia. Even for catfish, if you're doing catfish, the system still needs aeration because you want to keep it an, an aerobic environment. You don't want anaerobic uh, status. This can, it cannot use solar? It can use solar. It can use any form of electricity, but you have to have electricity and a backup. So when, what, when lights go off, you have to have your backup taking off. Okay, but is it expensive to go for the training? No, training is not very expensive. It's not expensive in that is the most important thing. So you, you can decide to go for this, invest a lot of money, and a lot of people have done that because they are trying to save that training cost. Mm. So they invest a lot of money without going for training, and then they end up failing, so losing a lot of money. You see, training also, once you go for the training and you understand the technology, you will be able to know whether really that technology is for you or not for you. Because it needs some dedication. You have to be able to check the parameters, manage the parameters. It takes a bit of your time, Say 10 minutes every morning you need to spend on the time and, and you are fine, you are good to go. So training is the most important. Without training, you, you will not be able to do okay. the technology. Ah. And then, and then this, this technology, you see with these tanks, because we make them ourselves, we can make any size for you. So if you want a 5 meter diameter tank, you want 10 meters, 20 meters, whatever size you want, we can make it for you in this. Now after this, we are going to bring another technology for ponds. This is for tanks, that is for ponds. So where you have a pond and you already have and with that technology, you will be able to increase your production by 5 to 30 times what you are currently doing. So that technology, will, we will bring it, we will introduce it 
later. So I'm gonna put a website link for you guys to um, check it out if you want to um, enroll for the training. And um, yeah, it's it's more affordable and go learn it and start this wherever you are. Like I said, this year I'm teaching you how to fish. I mean, the easiest way to fish with a little amount of money. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, it's still your favorite village boy, Mr. Ghana Baby, and I'm gonna see you in the next one.